So we're about 56% of the way through if you count the results as well as the updates that we've seen over the last couple of months. So as expected, as we flagged earlier, that um, result quality typically deteriorates as we go through reporting season. We've seen a little bit of that. So out of the 111 companies that we monitor um, through reporting season so far, 45% of companies have beaten expectations. Now, this is down from that 56% that we saw last week. However, it's still well above the 20% bid rate that we typically see um, over the past few years. So um, it's a remarkable turnaround just considering uh, the events of the last um, 12 months. So looking at the companies that have reported, FY21 earnings have been revised up a pretty healthy 10.6%. Uh, um, and impressively, this is on the back of um, upgrades of 10.2% um, since September last year. So that's even following the August reporting season. So um, what we have seen, though, however, is that share price reactions generally haven't gone the way of results. And I think uh, we sort of detail three reasons for that. Firstly, just given we're nearly back at the Feb 2020 uh, market high, um, valuations are more than priced in uh, a lot of that upgrade momentum that we've seen recently. Um, secondly, demand is expected to taper off quite considerably. We've seen uh, that from some of the commentary of some of the, the companies, just given the government stimulus uh, rolls off um, in, in March, obviously um, JobKeeper disappearing there, um, and a lot of stimulatory measures um, um, being paired back. Uh, thirdly, a broader reflationary uh, environment has prompted some profit taking, particularly in some of the, the COVID-19 uh, winners in favour of some of the cyclicals. So perhaps um, even though we're seeing some pretty uh, stellar results there, the market's not rewarding those companies. So misses generally have been uh, few and far between, as, as you can see there. So just given the supportive backdrop, um, obviously they have been punished quite severely, down 11% uh, on average um, if you do miss um, consensus expectations. It's also clear that the market is re rewarding the COVID losers, some of the problem childs um, and you know, companies that have been quite beaten down due to COVID. So if you look at the, the outperformers and some uh, pretty good results, um, EML Payments, LaVisa, Seven West, PAC, Credit Corp, um, and even Cochlear. Um, so a few themes that really stand out to us so far. Uh, firstly, it's some of the, the high P games really disappointing um, and failing to live up to expectations despite some pretty good results, as I touched on earlier. If you look at net wealth, it's down 15%. Um, ResMed's down 6% from the result. Domains down 8%, Altium down 5%, and some of the online retailers, if you think of Kogan, Temple and Webster, as well as Redbubble, all down uh, double digits since the result or the update. So um, we think one of the reasons for this is, um, as we pointed out pre-reporting seasons, the earnings growth in the market has broadened quite considerably. Um, that chart on the left shows you. So it really takes off some of the shine of the high PE names. Um, and the growth rates there. And considering they are uh, moderating somewhat, uh, we do think that cyclical rotation into some of the sectors that have been left behind will continue. So if you look at the PE uh, chart on the right-hand side, you can see that gap between sort of the industrials, X the financials to materials and, and financials. So we think the market will pay more attention going forward into uh, to the fundamentals. And we've seen the, the 12 month forward PE ratio of the market really trade sideways um, over the last few months and really the market is focused uh, more so on earnings uh, rather than just pure momentum. Um, so investors are clearly also backing the reflation trade. If you look at some of the uh, sectors that have outperformed over the months, now the ASX 200 is up 3%, but if you compare that to some of the sectors that have led this month, banks are up 7%, diffins are up 4%, media entertainment up 7.6%. We've got autos and components up 8.7%. Consumer services and gaming, that's up 7.6%, uh, up 8%, 8 and the materials up 5.5%. So really you can see uh, investors really tilting the way of uh, reflation. Um, the other theme is around currency. We thought that um, that would have a much bigger impact than it did uh, through reporting season. So uh, we're not seeing that flow through and encouragingly um, the, the growth offshore is more than um, enough to offset the, the the headwinds coming from a higher Aussie dollar. If you look at some of the, the real outperformers this reporting season, Reliance since its update is up 6%, Aurora's up 8.8, Ansel's up 13, Amcor's up 3, Cochlear's up 7.6, Virgin UK's up 23, and EML payments up 21%. So it confirms that that post-COVID uh, recovery is also taking shape, not just here, but offshore. And if um, 
you know, what we're seeing offshore with the vaccines continues to play out, goes to plan and COVID gets under control, then no doubt we could see a similar scenario play out offshore as we have seen um, in Australia. So potential for further upside surprise offshore. And um, we've seen that through the US reporting season so far. And the final thing um, just to talk about is around income. Obviously, we've heard from Horizon there really surprising on the upside with the dividend after the drought of 2020. Um, it's been a pretty good year uh, for income investors so far. So at this point in reporting season, what we've seen is the number of dividend paying companies have increased uh, from 72% to 81%. Uh, what's more impressive, and I think it's a, a genuine sign of corporate confidence, is 34% of companies are paying a higher interim dividend than the final dividend um, in August. Um, so look, it's um, I think, you know, given we've seen uh, a rebound in corporate confidence. We're seeing that rebound in um, the city economic surprise in index. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty good year for income. And you can see there, uh, dividends have been revised up pretty much across the board, um, across many sectors, and most notably the miners. So um, I encourage you to also have a look at Adrian Prendergast's note uh, that was published through the results, just looking at the miners and the potential yield on offer there as well. Um, and finally, I'll just leave you with this, uh, the flag hits and misses. Um, the analysts have caught them really well from the, the playbook, um, beats are up 5%, misses are down 5%. So encouraged to, to have a look at that. There's a few um, flagged hits and misses that are due to report this week.